Hey guys, this is Austin from Space Brain Circuits. Um, this is a beginner's guide for anyone that's recently bought the Minivolts desktop. I'd like to go over a few of the commonly asked questions. Um, and then later as well, I'd like to get the grandmother set up and go step by step to hope, hopefully clear up any confusion. Okay, so the most commonly asked question I get is what DC adapter do I need to power the Minivolts desktop? And the answer is you need a 9 volt center positive DC adapter. So I have one here. And the way you can check to see if you have a center positive adapter, if you look at the bottom, you can see the small diagram where the plus sign is pointed towards the middle portion um, of the barrel. So this is a center positive. This will work. You can get these on Amazon for usually around $10 USD. Um, however, too, and this is a little confusing, but most guitar pedals use center negative. So here's a one spot. Um, and this is a center negative adapter. And once again, if you look on the bottom, you can see, if it gets in focus, you can see that the minus sign is pointed towards the center of the diagram. So this will not work. So I want to show you too, a lot of people are concerned, what, do I, what if I accidentally plug in a 9 volt center negative and I can show you. So I'm going to plug this in and then I'll plug it in. And if you turn it on, Nothing will happen. It has reverse voltage protection, so no worries there. And then I will hook up the center positive adapter. And if I turn it on, it turns on, so we know it works. So for sure, too, check around your house. These are very, very common. Um, so that way it helps keep you from having to spend more money. Um, but once again, just reach out if you have any questions. I'll leave some links in the description for some of the adapters that I typically get um, for US and then also overseas too. Okay, so now that we have the Mibolts desktop powered up, I wanna talk about um, some other common questions that I typically would get. So when you're first ready to use the Mibolts desktop, um, obviously you're gonna need a MIDI cable connected from your controller to the desktop. So you're gonna go MIDI out of your controller to MIDI in on the desktop. And then when you press a note, you should see these gate LEDs light up. So let's do that next. So I'm going to play a few notes. And oh no, it's not working. Why is that, ha why is that happening? And the reason is because, because the device is only operating across a 5 volt range, it will only respond to MIDI notes between 36 and 95. So if you look here on my microboot, I have the octave level set very low. So what's happening is we're playing below that range. So all I have to do is adjust the range, and then now we're getting a response. So that's a common question. Another thing is if it's still not working for you, even after doing that, you'll need to check your MIDI channel on your controller. The MIDI Volts desktop is, expects MIDI channel 1 out of the box, um, so check that next. However, too, if you would want to, you can always change the MIDI channel um, on the MIDI Volts desktop over SysX messages. Okay, so now that we got the MIDI Volts desktop working with the external MIDI controller, um, let's talk about how you would hook this up with your grandmother. And like I said before, I want to do this in two ways. Let's, let's do it the most simplest way. We're using an external MIDI controller connected to the desktop, and then we'll patch this into the grandmother. This way is easiest. You do not have to do any global setting adjustments on the grandmother. And then the other way is to actually use the grandmother keyboard to control the MIDI Volts desktop, which requires some additional settings. So whenever I do this, first thing, always fire up the grandmother, um, let it warm up for a few minutes, otherwise you're gonna be fighting pitch issues. Um, and then also some of the settings that I typically do is I always set my octaves to eight feet for both oscillators. Mixers, I usually have them around 10 o'clock. Um, filter open, and then typically I'll use sawtooth for the waveforms. So I think it's really important too, is to not to get over your head when first using a MIDI Volts desktop. Um, I highly recommend easing into um, Poly 3 mode. I've had a lot of people message me that they can't get Poly 3 mode to work, but really it's best to first start with Unison and then work your way up to those um, multi-voice um, modes on the MIDI-Volt desktop. So let's go ahead and make sure this is set to Unison first. So it toggles down, it's up to the A on the slide switch. Um, so when you press a note, all gate LEDs light up. And this is the best way to get started because it'll, it's the easiest way to get your oscillators in tune so that you can do um, duo mode, poly three mode. 
Okay, so now let's hook up the medieval desktop to the grandmother. So I'm going to go V0 on CV to oscillator 1 pitch in. And then V1 CV to oscillator 2 pitch in. So now when I play, um, obviously you can't hear anything because the MIDI volts is only sending CV signals to the oscillators. It's not telling it to open the VCA. So easiest way around this is to set it to drone mode and then we'll hear um, the pitch changes. So let's do that. <laughs> Okay, so now that it's in tune, um, let's go ahead and switch this to duophonic mode. And then now when we play the drone, we should be able to play two note chords. Okay, and that's duophonic mode. So now a lot of people ask me, well, can I not use the keyboard release mode um, when I'm using the MIDI Volts desktop? Well, you can. You just have to send the proper gate signal. So. I'm going to take V0 gate and send it into the trigger. So now when I press a note, it works as expected. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and switch to poly 3 mode. So we're going to need to send to oh, wait in and then wave out to noise in. And then once again, have to tune first. So let's go to unison and let's listen here. Okay, it sounds good. Well, it sounds like we're in tune. Now let's switch to poly three. Okay, so next up I want to demonstrate how to hook your grandmother keyboard up directly to the MIDI Volts desktop. Um, so the most important thing about doing it this way is you must turn off local mode. Um, and I think the best way to explain why you need to do this is to demonstrate it. So before we get too far, currently I have the Moog hooked up from MIDI out to the MIDI Volts desktop. And then we will send V0CV to pitch in. And the one CV to pitch in on oscillator two. So now when I switch to drone mode, you'll hear the results when you don't turn this off. So obviously the scaling is completely messed up. And the reason this is happening is because, because local mode is still on, the grandmother keyboard is sending pitch CV to the oscillators, but also MIDI Volts desktop is also sending a control voltage to the oscillator. So these two voltages are getting summed and creating this crazy um, result. And actually, I think it's actually a 0 0.5 per volt um, octave scaling. So obviously, really important, first thing you need to do if you want to use it in this mode is you have to turn off local mode. So you do that, press hold, the sync button will start to blink, press D sharp, and then F twice. And whenever I do uh, master settings like this, I usually just restart the grandmother in MIDI Volts desktop um, just to give it a fresh start. So I'll turn them both back on. And now, um, when we switch to drone, we should get correct scaling. So it sounds much better. So, um, so now you know why you must do this. So next thing, let's just go over quickly. Typically when I do this, I set my grandmother to um, some standard settings. So for both oscillators, I'll set them to eight foot. I typically start with sawtooth, filter wide open, um, mixer section, usually around um, 10 o'clock. And then um, I leave it on keyboard release until I'm ready to start doing things like tuning. Obviously, you don't have to leave it at this. This is just for me, I found easiest just to get started. But for sure, once you get comfortable, change everything because you can make some really amazing sounds. So 
Once again, first, let's just go through unison. Let's tune two oscillators, and then we'll do duophonic mode. So we are on unison. Let's just tune. And uh, another thing that I would recommend, I usually try to tune in a higher octave just because you can hear the beating a little bit easier. But uh, tuning sounds good. Let's switch to the duo mode, and let's try to play two note chords now. So... So great. So another thing people always ask me, well, why can't I use keyboard release mode? And the reason why is because local mode is now off. Um, so in order to do this, all you have to do is send a gate from, I typically will do V0 gate out and then send this to the trigger. And now you can use your envelope and keyboard release um, modes for your VCA. So let's do V2 CV to rate in and then wave out to noise in. And once again, unison because we need to tune that third oscillator in the modulation section. So let's just do that. Pretty close, at least for this demonstration. And then let's switch to poly three, and then we can play um, three boys polyphony. And that's basically it. So I really just wanted to give everyone. A rundown of how I typically do things and hope to clear up any questions. Once again though if you have any issues or questions just feel free to reach out to me. Um, just once again wanted to thank everyone for giving this device a shot and I hope you guys are enjoying. Thanks.